Hello friends, this video on neat ray optics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 26. An equiconvex lens is cut into two halves along x o x, y o y as shown in the figure. Let f f dash f double dash be the focal lengths of the complete lens of each half in case 1 and of each half in case 2 respectively. Choose the correct statement from the following. So let us look at the different cases. So first of all, uh, what is happening in case 1? In case 1, the lens is cut into two halves like this along the x-axis. And in case 2, the lens is cut into two halves like this along the y-axis. Right? And as per the question, in case 1, the focal length of each half is f dash. And in case 2, the focal length of each half is f double dash. And the focal length of the complete lens is f. So these are the three things which are given in the question. Now let us try to solve it one by one. So let us call this as case number one. So in this case, we can say one by f is equal to mu minus one, one by r1 minus one by r2. So we are basically using the lens maker formula. So here we can say mu minus 1 into r1 and r2 is equal in this case. So this would be 1 by r minus 1 by minus r because for this, the radi for this surface the radius of curvature is positive, for this surface it is negative. So this will be equal to mu minus 1 into 2 by r. Right? Now let's talk about case 1. So in case 1, what happens? 1 by f dash, that means if you want to find out the net focal length in this setup. So this would be equal to mu minus 1 into 1 by r minus 1 by minus r. Because in this case also, there is no change in the radius of curvature. The radius of curvature still remains the same. Right? And here on both the sides you have the convex surfaces. So in this case also the value comes out to be 2 by r into mu minus 1. So basically you see that the value of f is equal to f dash. So one relation is clear. So that means option b and option d they are definitely not correct. Now let us look at case number 2. So for case number 2. 1 by f double dash because in this case each half is a plano convex lens. So each half is a plano convex lens therefore the calculation would vary. So in this case it would be mu minus 1, 1 by r1 which is 1 by r minus 1 by for the plane surface it would be infinity. So therefore this will be equal to mu minus 1 divided by r. So basically we see that f double dash is equal to 2f. So which is the correct option? It is c. Question number 27. A body is located on a wall. Its image of equal size is to be obtained on a parallel wall with the help of a convex lens. Okay. The lens is placed at a distance d ahead of the second wall. Then the required focal length will be. Okay. So the question is somewhat like this. There is a wall here. Which is the object. And there is another wall. Here. Which is located parallel. Right. And what do we want? We want... Now, let's say that the object is somewhere on this wall, okay. Now, we want an image of this object to be formed on this wall such that the image is of equal size as that of the object. So, that means we basically want our image to be here. And what do we have? We have a convex lens somewhere in between these two walls. And it is given that the lens is placed at a distance d ahead of the second wall. So now what we have learned from the image formation for convex lens is that only when an object is placed exactly at the center of curvature, like as you see here, in this case, 
this is the object and this is the image so this is the only position where if you keep the object the image formed will be of the same size as that of the object and that is what we want here so that means we will have to place the lens in such a way that the object is placed exactly at 2f now here in the question it says that the object is placed at a distance d so that means d is basically d, d has to be equal to 2f that means the object must be placed at 2f only then we will have an image which is of equal size as that of the object so from this we can say that the focal length must be equal to d by 2 so option b is the correct one question number 28 Diameter of human eye lens is 2 mm. What will be the minimum distance between two points to resolve them which are situated at a distance of 50 meters from the eye? Now first of all, let us quickly recall the definition of angular limit of resolution of eye. So basically the angular limit of resolution is given by theta is equal to lambda by d where theta is the wavelength of light used and what is d? D is the diameter of the eye lens. So this is how we calculate the uh, angular limit of resolution of eye. Right? Now in this question it is talking about two points such that the two points, the, the distance between the two points is we do, how much we do not know. But let's say that P1 and P2 are the two points. Okay, And let's say this is our eye. So now if we talk about the angular resolution of these two points from the eye. So basically in this case, this angle would actually determine the angular resolution of the eye so that it can actually distinguish between these two points. Right? Now let us say that the distance between these two points is y. Right? And what is the distance of these points from the eye? Let's call that distance as capital D. So now looking at this diagram, we have to find out this theta. So this theta is actually divided into two halves, theta 1 and theta 2. So theta 1 will be equal to tan theta is perpendicular by base that is equal to y by 2 divided by capital D. Similarly, theta 2 will be equal to y by 2 divided by capital D. So therefore theta will be equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 that is equal to y by d. So we get theta is equal to y by capital D. So now we can equate both of these theta is equal to lambda by small d. Theta is also equal to y by capital D. So we can put all of these together. Now the value of y is something which we have to calculate. So y will be equal to lambda by small d into capital D. So lambda is 5000 angstrom. So 5000 into 10 to the power minus 10. Capital D is distance of these points from the eye which is given as 50 meters divided by small d which is the diameter of the eye lens which is again given as 2 millimeters. So 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters. So now this would be 2 into 25. So this comes out to be 1.25 centimeters. So C is the right option. Question number 29. A man is 6 feet tall. In order to see his entire image, he requires a plane mirror of minimum length equal to. Okay. So let us understand it like this. Let's say that this is the man and his, the eyes of the man are located somewhere here. So basically when will the man be able to see his complete image? When the ray from the topmost portion of his body hits the mirror, gets reflected back and reaches his eye. Similarly, the ray from the bottommost part of his body hits the mirror and then reflects back and reaches his eyes. So only then he will be able to see his complete image. So basically this should be the minimum height of the mirror. So if the height of the man is h, then the height of the mirror should be h by 2. So it has been proved mathematically. In fact, we have discussed this in the theory part, right? So here the height of the man is given as 6 feet. Therefore, the height of the mirror would be h by 2, that is 6 by 2, which is equal to 3 feet. 
So the answer would be D. Now there could be another case. So le let's discuss one more special case. Now let's say that you have a wall here and the height of the wall is H, capital H, right? And let's say that there is a man who is standing here and there is a mirror here. So now you have to tell, now let's say this is wall or this is tower, let's say, tower of height H. So what should be the height of a mirror such that you are able to see the complete image of the tower? So in that case, the from the topmost portion of the tower, the light ray should reach the mirror and reflect back to the eyes of the person. Similarly, the light from the bottommost part should reach the mirror and the reflected ray should reach the eyes of the person. Only then he will be able to see the full image of the tower. So in this case, the minimum height of the mirror that you would need is H by 3. So whenever you have to see your complete image in the mirror, then you need a, uh, the mirror height should be half of your height minimum. If you want to see the height of another object which is behind you, then the height of the mirror should be minimum h by 3. That is one third of the height of the tower. Now here the position of the man should be exactly in between the tower and the mirror. That means if this distance is d, then this distance should also be equal to d. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.